Huntingtown Road. Um, I'm a parent here in Newtown. I think most of you know me. I have an eighth grader, sixth grader, and a second grader. Um, I'm also a certified teacher, believe it or not, and I'm grateful to be employed by Newtown Public Schools as a substitute teacher. I want to share with you something. Um, my son applied to several private high schools. He didn't want to, but we wanted to offer him some opportunities. Well, he made it into all of them. And not only did he make it into all of them, but he got a letter from one of them that praised him very, very highly for his academic excellence. In fact, they offered him a scholarship. They put him in honors everything. And that's not because Ben is in Gates or Ben has a mother who's a teacher, but that's because what Newtown has offered him. And I am eternally grateful for what Newtown has provided for him. Now, Ben has been in the public school system for nine years. And he came in at a time where we had a Blue Ribbon High School, where we weren't so concerned about the numbers of the enrollment numbers or how many students there were in a class. He came at a time where things were fairly comfortable. And things are very uncomfortable right now, economically, for everybody. I know people who have lost their jobs. I know people whose jobs have been cut in half. And it's very scary. But I'm wondering what happens when you have a classroom, okay, where parents have lost their jobs, where they're struggling at home, where there's unrest. And I'm wondering, the more children you add to the mix, how's a teacher able to deal with that? They don't just have to teach, but they now have to become social workers. They have to love. They have to care. Not that they don't, but they have to go above and beyond the call of duty and do what sometimes at home the parents just can't because of the emotional turmoil that they're experiencing. So I'm concerned in the long run for the future of these children because teachers only have so many hours in a given day, only so much time to prepare them for the CMTs because we do have to answer the No Child Left Behind laws. We still have to do that. So I'm concerned for the future of our children in the long run. And what happens to them when they become teenagers? Right now they're okay, right? We're cocooned in our elementary school classrooms. But what happens later on? Our economy is changing so rapidly. As a matter of fact, C-SPAN, um, they aired a uh, governor's winter meeting, and they were discussing the direction of our economy and what it is that our schools need to prepare for, for these children in the 21st century, what skills they're going to need to have. And things are changing so rapidly right now that we have to begin to change rapidly in the way that we think. Otherwise, we will be left behind with respect to the rest of the world. So our problems right now economically are going to follow us if we are not very careful and very prudent about the way that we do things. So I ask you, just like everybody else did tonight, to consider not just the cuts. It's not just the cuts. It's the long-term ramifications of what's going on. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Nope. Thank you very much. Um, do you want to? You need this. Or you need this. <laughs> I would like to thank the Board of Education.
the Board of Education would like to thank the Board of Finance for inviting us here tonight to let us present our budget to you. We realize that a lot of you were at the public hearing. You have seen parts of our budget, and we are, we've made some changes in different slides, and we hope to speak to different points. I'd first like to start by introducing the members of the Board of Education that are here, Lillian Bittman, who will be speaking later, Kathy Fetchick, Richard Gaines, David Nanavati, I believe Kathleen Christie is in the room over there, and Anna Wiedemann, our seventh member, is home and she is not feeling well, but wishes she were here. I have been on the board for, this is my twelfth year, and... This is my 12th year, and what's, what's happening this year is something that I've never seen before. In our lifetimes, we've never been part of a recession in an economy that is in such dire straits. And at the same time, this is the lowest budget in my 11 years on the board that we are bringing to the town of Newtown. It feels like we are walking a tightrope trying to balance the reality of the recession economy with the quality education. I like to think of it almost as we're doing a limbo. We're in line going underneath that bar, and each year, and especially this year, that bar gets lower and lower and lower until we get to the point where we can't get under that bar anymore and still have a school system left. All six of our unions along with our four top administrators, are taking some financial step backwards to help with this economy. What we want to do, and what they want to do, is ensure that our community remains viable in these difficult economic times. So all six of our unions are bus drivers who are not officially a union, but they are going to lose three days pay, as you will hear from the superintendent, join them, and everybody is taking a step backwards, trying to make this work. Moving to this next slide, the key budget drivers for 2009-2010. The first one speaks for itself, the unprecedented national economic downturn. And what I think best sums this up is the editorial from February 13th, Newtown B. The title of the editorial was The Shadow of an Encroaching World. I'm going down to the last paragraph, and if you will forgive me, I'm going to read a few lines. We are now required to think deeply about what is important and what is not, to decide what sacrifices we are prepared to make for which priorities, and to define in so doing those truly special qualities of our town we wish to carry at all costs with us into the future. From our perspective, again, this is from the B's editorial, the welfare of those with the least resources at greatest risk, like those served by Kevin's Community Center, makes that list of priorities, as does the community's long-standing commitment to education and the protection of its environment and natural resources. Going down to student needs. Newtown has 5,576 students this year. Of that, 485 have some, spe some type of special ed identification. We have 18 of those students are outplaced. The rest of the 485 are attending our school. Of those 485, 52 are autistic. We have there are not a single self-contained classroom left in this district. Every one of these 485 and our autistic children who aren't outplaced are in these regular classrooms. If you look at a regular classroom, you've got your gifted student and you've got your special needs student. That ability level is huge, the difference between the two ability levels. And what our teachers have to do is teach to whoever is in that room and all of the, the kids in between because they are going to be our future leaders. 